thank God for a wonderful morning. And I'm excited to share with you uh, and study God's Word uh, this morning. We just begin with a short story that happened in Chinatown 65 years ago. On that evening, a mother was about to give birth, and the husband went out to look for a car to bring her to the maternity clinic. When he went out, he found out that there was a fire somewhere, and therefore he tried to check it out first. When he finally got back, his wife has already given birth, and another in law has already brought her to the maternity clinic. And the in law greeted him and said, Congratulations, it's a boy. However, in his heart, I think uh, he has some excitement and yet there are some doubts because he was saying in his heart, You must not get it. I already have five girls in a row, and this one must also be a girl. However, by God's grace, he is a boy. This morning, this boy is not a young boy, not a young man, but he stands before you as the outgoing elder of grace and the church. First of all, I'd like to thank our church for your patience all this years. And uh, in a way, uh, in most of my ministries, I am in a way seconded to be as holy. And uh, many times, you know, I have not spent a lot of time uh, ministering in a way directly uh, to our members and to our church. But I thank our church for uh, the patience. Many times, you know, when I look at many of the faces, you might know, not recognize them more. And there's always one way that uh, I try to recognize you and ask you, who is your father? Who is your mother? Because most likely I may know your dad, I may know your mom, okay? but you have grown and I have needs. And therefore, uh, we don't know each other face to face anymore. But thank God that, just like what Brother Ernie, I already has said, you know, uh, or what Molly, Sister Molly has said, when uh, Elder Ernie uh, retired from his eldership, now it's time for you to, to return him to me. <laughs> this morning, I don't think you will object uh, that I begin by sharing and in a way to recount some of God's grace in my life. Looking back for 65 years, in a way I can really say from my heart that it's not about me. And really, my life can only be summarized by these words that it is all of God's grace. First of all, being born in a very traditional uh, Chinese family, a non-Christian family, one can imagine how I could be put in a Christian school where day in and day out I can hear the gospel here. And that is how I come to know the Lord. And through just one, this one verse from John 1, 12, as many as receive him, even to those who believe in his name, he gave them the authority to become the children of God. And that is how I came to know the Lord. Thanks to Brother uh, Wayne this morning, because many of the songs and the verses that we have shared really reminds me that it is not for the grace of God. I do not know where I would be today. I would not be standing here. I would not be standing here. I also thank my God for the opportunity to be able to go through four years of uh, training and to be able to uh, serve Him uh, one way or another, directly or indirectly, uh, for the past uh, 25 years. And especially the last 15 years, uh, where we are able to minister to many of our mainland uh, brothers. I also thank God for my family. As many of you have known that uh, my mom was baptized only uh, two years ago by our pastor. She was 95 then. Still going on, although her health is in a way uh, declining. 
but it's a long wait. But it's never a waste, you know, uh, to wait. And that God has been uh, faithful. My dad, even though he passed away, or just thinking about the Lord earlier, that's about almost 40 years ago. But I'm thankful that, and I'm confident that he was taken uh, by the Lord. Okay. During his uh, last few days of life, our former pastor Tan Kai Wong visited him, shared with him the gospel. And there's only one thing that I'm confident is that he asked the pastor this question. Can God accept a person like me? A very simple question, and yet I think it says much about the fact that he knew that he was also a sinner, and therefore he needs a savior. And even though he doesn't get a chance to be baptized, I think the Lord, in his faithfulness, has taken him. Lastly, I'd like to thank God for the many opportunities, especially this uh, past few years, to continue to learn how to be a better husband and how to be a better father. And continue to learn. Okay? And I'm not, uh, I'm not complete yet. Okay? And I'm not perfect. And probably never uh, will be until that day when the Lord will take me. I thank God for the opportunity where I can learn from my children and I can also learn from my wife who is so uh, patient uh, to me. Without her, I think I would not be able to serve uh, as much you know, as I would uh, uh, like to. This morning, let us praise God together for all His grace for show me and God's grace has been shown to each one of us in various ways and in different manners. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, I would like to just open my mouth and my heart to praise you for your faithfulness and for your sovereign will and how you have led someone who is nothing unworthy and yet you put a value there. Father, I pray that you receive all the praise and honor and the glory in spite of our imperfection in spite of our incompleteness and even in times where we have been disobedient and we have chosen to, choose to walk our ways. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness and I am confident, Lord, that you are also faithful to each one of us and you will never be faithless and because we cannot go against your faithfulness and yet, Lord, we know that you are also a righteous God and this morning, Father, even as we Look at what Paul has to say, not just to the Ephesian elders at that time, but to us this morning, Lord. May you continue to spur us, Lord, in our first of that course that you have set for us. Lord, I pray that your spirit will be the one who teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Early May, I had a chance to go back to Dallas Seminary. It is our 25th uh, homecoming. Uh, in a way, I have looked forward uh, to this special event. But to my disappointment, not many of my batchmates were there. However, there was one uh, whom I know uh, more closely. He is now the uh, department chair of the missions department. We have a uh, good time uh, sharing, but in this sharing, he said something. Uh, to me. You know, many things have changed, including our students, including you know, the new seminarians and between our present uh, students. For a seminarian who is graduating at the moment, he said, if someone will say, I can commit for five years, many of them thought that is long enough. Five years. That is long enough. Meaning after five years, probably he will go back to his profession. In a way, there is nothing wrong. Or maybe after five years, he will just do what he can or what he himself will desire to do. In terms of maybe going out to missions, 
or to serve the Lord in a full-time capacity. It seems that people today, five years is a long enough for reflection. What a contrast with what Paul has to say to the Ephesian elders when he was on his way to Jerusalem. This morning, this passage, uh, don't blame Pastor Alex for a very long passage. It is not a sign to me. It's a passage you know, that is uh, very close uh, to my heart. But we never, never apologize for long passages. But this is a very important passage you know, in the life of Paul. As you will notice, and if we go back at least to two verses in this very long passage, in verse 23 and verse 24, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me that in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me, but I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Comparing this to a five-year commitment of the modern seminary, for Paul, this commitment is a lifetime. For Paul, in very simple words, he is committed to finish the course that God has called him to. He continues to pursue the call of God. There is nothing sure about the days ahead, except for the fact that the Holy Spirit, in a way, has compelled him or has warned him, and that is the only thing that is true that is, there will be persecutions, there will be trials, there will be imprisonment. That is the call of God. And then even with those warnings, you would see that Paul did not retract from going to Jerusalem. Maybe that is also what happens to Jesus when he turns toward Jerusalem. Even though that in Jerusalem he knows that he will be persecuted, he will be put to death, and yet the Lord Jesus continued to walk toward Jerusalem. This is the same attitude. Of Paul, and he was committed to pursue, to complete the course that God has given him. It is not five years. In a way, it is not about how long our life is. But if we believe that once saved, always saved. I think we should also say that once committed to Jesus Christ, it is also for a life. This passage technically is for the leaders of Ephesus. However, this passage also speaks to us that all our leaders, our pastor, to myself, and to all of us. If we want to be serious followers of Jesus Christ, if we want to be an ardent disciple of Jesus Christ, from the day that we come to believe in Jesus, there is no turning back. There is only one way, and there is only one direction, and there is only one focus. We want to complete the course. This could be applied to a full-time community. This could be applied to our daily walk with our Lord Jesus. That there is no turning back. Once in China, you know, in one of our nearby hometown, I talked to a old lady, a believer. You know, these old people, they are so precious. Even though they do not know a lot of theology, they, they may even be illiterate, and yet their faith is so simple and genuine. And she shared with me about her faith in Jesus Christ. After she turned away from her idols, come to know the Lord Jesus, it is not an old rosy road. Rather, after he believed in Jesus Christ, his granddaughter and his daughter-in-law died in a 
create the possibility. And people came to her and said, you know, this is what happened to you, see, you have left your idols. And that is why you have come to this kind of situation. You lost two lives in your family. Turn back. Come back and worship what you use to worship. However, she, even in her let her say she knows that Chinese father who had a good voice never turns off. Or we turn back and eat the grass that is uh, behind. She said, I will not turn back. Once I follow Jesus Christ, I follow him for my life. I don't know if she's still a little or not, but I'm confident that this elderly sister continue to follow Jesus Christ. Not for a year, not for five years, but for a life. In this race of life, all of us run. Even though one may only win the prize, as Paul said, and yet everyone runs. The winner is not necessarily the one who reaches the finish line first. But every one of us will be a winner when we finish the course. I think what that matters is that we pursue and we continue and we are committed to finish and to complete the course. As I was thinking about these passages, two people came into my mind. These are those mainland alumni of our PSOP. One is only 33 and the other one is in his early Two weeks from now, Charlie would, you know, have been gone home with the Lord for two years. At that point, when he was 32, he was diagnosed for a throat. <laughs> Charlie was that kind of person, he's a bit big, and yet, you know, his mind is quick, and he, you know, he's also very uh, quick to do things, and in a way, as he managed our partner's school, uh, he went from marketing to everything, sort of doing uh, doing everything. And even in his, in his sickness, uh, in a way, he has not slowed down uh, so much. You know, one time, he did something foolish, you know, in the hospital, he tried to not be the elevator, you know, Go up with an elevator for how many floors? Oh. In his funeral, you know, how do you comfort a mother who lost a son? How would you comfort a widow who lost a husband at 33? They are married only for seven years. I am one of their ninos. How would you comfort a parent of twin? These are the only words that I can think of that Charlie he runs too fast. Or he runs with a very quick pace, not said, you know, what can be accomplished by others in 60 years he has accomplished in a way in 30 years. And therefore, it's time for the Lord. However, what we are trying to say here is that. Charlie has been faithful to me until he meets the Lord's house. Another alumni is Tenchi Wei. He's in his early 50s. Late April, that is just a month ago, I said I was able to visit him in his hospital bed in Shaman four days before he was taken by the Lord. I still remember the time when he was coming to you know, the church gave him a very warm, uh, you know, just to that. And he not thinking after we finish and, uh, and as he began to serve, and as I count probably, it's less than 10 years old and all, and he got chose to when we visited him, uh, 
this condition was actually his whole abdominal part was blocked. Nothing can go in and nothing can come out. However, we would not, in a way, see the sign of complaint or words of complaint. But these are the words that he shared. He said before, we preach what we believe. But now, we believe what we preach. But before I preach what I believe, but now I live what I preach. Profound words. I think what he's saying is, at this moment of suffering in his physical body, then he fully understand the gospel that he has so faithfully preached during his lifetime. Even today, as we look at this passage of Paul, I mean, there are really just two things that we can see. Paul said, I'm going to finish my course. And two of us, the first is the kind of life that I have exhibited to you and also in accomplishing what God has told me to do. Even as we think about these words of Chihui, and he said that now we live what we use to preach. He brought us to one important factor in the life of Paul. He continued to pursue that spot by, by consistently portraying a godly life. A life that is transparent every second and not just for a day or a year or ten years. If we take note of this long speech of Paul, I think we would notice that the beginning and the end, Paul talks about his own life and about the life that he has led. I don't think this would be too wrong well for Paul to say this kind of things. Many times in the Paul, we will see that he's the humblest person in a way, and yet when it comes to the time where he needs to talk and say something about himself, he boldly say it to the Ephesian leaders. He began by saying, you know. And actually very simple words, you know that from the first time I stepped into Asia and for all time, every time, you know what are the things that have happened. You translate that as how I live. In a way, Paul is not, you know, Paul is not uh, restrained from saying, this is how I live, and you know it. And Paul, in a way, doesn't have to repeat all the details. These are the words that start going on. Every, from the moment I step into Asia, every hour, every time, the things that happen, you know and you can testify that is who I The word for this life is transparent. Every second and every hour of this life. I know that I don't dare compare it all because there will be some parts in my life, probably in my own private life, that I would not, that I would not be able to show to you. And God continue to help me. That we would be able to live a life just like Paul. Where he can say, look at me, it's an open book. You can look at it. In the concluding part, all again comes back to his own life. You know, you know that, you know, I did not forget anyone's silver and gold, but rather I work with my own hands to support myself and also my co-workers in order to help me. Knowing that what Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. My sisters, do not get me wrong. I would be one of the foremost proponents that we should treat our uh, pastors, uh, you know, the best that we can. 
You should not expect our customers you know, to be like Paul and then you will be effective. But if God has called you to be a filmmaker, well, However, what we are saying here is that Paul, because he is the Christ, and he wants to work in his hand to support himself and to his co workers and even to help other people because he finds that he continues to experience God's grace even just by people. I think Paul here did not just gain his financial uh, uh, capacities, but all the in a way, this uh, Paul said it is more blessed to give than to receive. But sisters, actually, I'm very sure that many of us have also experienced that, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us remember that when we follow Jesus Christ, it's not more about receiving, but it is more about I think we have received more than enough from our God and our Lord Jesus Christ who has given His life for us. Even just as Christ did not keep back from giving us His life. Therefore, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we will also be willing to give our life or to complete the task that God has Call us to. Can you just allow me to share a recent uh, experience of God's grace? In a way, you know, this is not the boast or something that I've done or what, okay? But in a way, it is one of those rare cases where you really see how God is faithful and uh, you see that one of the things that God uh, delights in. Uh, we have one uh, client from Matanga City. Uh, I know his father-in-law and know his husband, her husband, and uh, now you know she's widow. And uh, I just happened to come to know that uh, his son uh, uh, was in a very serious surgery, and uh, the bill you know, has gone over a million. And I didn't realize that uh, I always think that because she has a business. Uh, she must have uh, no problem with the finances. And I found out that uh, actually uh, when, when she heard and read the bills, she came, uh, everyone would be happy. Okay. That means, you know, uh, as a widow to support you know, the business and the family, it is really not easy. And she herself also has a heart condition that must also be connected. And that will also cost her another million. That is not easy. But she's one of those few faithful believers in the Congress of cities. So my wife and I, we decided that we are going to assist her in a very uh, small way. You know, it's one of those rare situations. How many of us have ever received an Easter gift? I think you have received Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. Okay. How about an Easter gift? Have you ever received an Easter gift? Probably not. Okay. This year I received an Easter gift. And mind you, how much is that Easter gift? It is exactly the same amount that we paid for no, no, this Easter. Praise God for that, okay? Uh, I do not keep the Easter gift, we give it back to her. And, uh, no, the, the Lord did not give us another Easter gift, and that is praise God for that. Now, this morning, you know, we are not bragging about what we have done, no. Okay. But how many are in a way justifying okay, God's faithfulness? And even as we continue to serve Him faithfully, we can trust God for His own job, uh, faithfulness uh, in our lives. Brothers and sisters, this passage is not just about pastors and church leaders, this pastor is about you and I. When you follow Jesus Christ, that most single important thing is the life that you portray. Paul continues to portray a godly. And in every way, his life can be examined. It's not like our books in the RR. You know? We have to make some adjustments. No. 
Paul's life is an open book. He's not afraid of him. Kim can come and look at this one. Paul's life is about giving and trusting God. This is the life of God. In the ministry of this okay, no matter you know how you think a good teacher you are, when evaluation comes back, okay, there will always be at least a few who are really serious and they will tell you, you can do better. And I'm glad that your know, students will tell us that truthfully. You can do better. In a way, what I'm trying to say that as a teacher, we are not perfect. We are not a complete. Yet on the other hand, there is one thing that in a way all the students can agree, and is that the kind of care and love that we have shared with them. Probably we would not be the best teacher in terms of teaching skills. However, I think the best way that we have taught their lives is the way that we pour our lives into theirs. Not the amount of money that is poured into their lives, but it's our time, it's our dedication, it's our life. It is how we live. I remember that only well, in years ago, and uh, for us who are older, we remember the time when Princess Diana died in an accident. On the same, about the same time, I read in one of the news in the Singapore the newspaper about a shoemaker. He is in his name. When Princess Diana died, you know, we know that many people put flowers in the thing of the past. But when this shoemaker also passed away, on that loop there in Shenton Way in Singapore, where he used to fly this day day in and day out, many people brought flowers to that place. Nobody has already passed away. He may not be Princess Diana. He, may, he is just, probably we would say, a simple shooting man. He's not rich. And yet, for many people, his life is so rich. Because there's only one way to describe his life. He put people's shoes ahead of his life. Meaning, you know, when you bring your shoes for repair, he can return it on time. You can return it, you know, properly repair. And even on the day that he passed away, there are still a few pairs ready to be delivered to his clients. Brothers and sisters, today you may not be a full-time pastor. Today you may not be an elder. Today you may not be a Don't just say, I am just a believer. No, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You put the Lord's person on him. Or would five years of commitment be enough for you? Or is it a commitment for you? The words of Jesus is not only is he experiencing what he experienced the message that he used to preach. On the other hand, he also said that he used to preach what? We in the life of Paul, thirdly, we will see that Paul continues to preach God's word faithfully. In this passage, if we read it carefully, we will see that there are a few words that kept on being repeated. One word is that word where Paul said, I did not read hold, or I did not refrain, I did not keep it back from giving it. You can find that that process. You know, from the day I came to you, I will keep on sharing with you the counsel, the full counsel. Two times he said that I can get to preach to you or to preach the good news of the grace. I 
and I did not keep back anything that would be helpful to you, whether it was me or whether from house to house. Paul said, I did not withhold anything. I keep on preaching the word of God to you. We also call the word, the verb that Paul used for preaching is not our, our, or the more common word of, you know, just announcing or declaring, but he used the word. I think in English, probably the best is to say, I testify. It is a very emphatic uh, word. In the same way that the Holy Spirit has testified to Paul, the only persecution and sufferings is going is waiting for him. Two times Paul also said, I testify to you the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of the grace of God. My sisters, many times uh, in our very pragmatic uh, word, I'm very afraid you know, that there might be time for me. We might go a little bit cold or we not, may not be as anxious you know, to, to study or you know that the word of God uh, or uh, Probably we would go for things you know, in a way that would be more uh, super friendly. And there's nothing wrong with that. On one hand, you want to be super friendly, and yet, on the other hand, we should never forget that the truth and our foundation is still on the firm word. And that cannot be compromised. Because when we compromise, the word of God in our preaching, we also compromise the message and we compromise. Many people today, you know, love to hear, God loves you, God is going to bless you, all of this are good and it is true, and yet it seems to me that the pendulum has swept over to such a place already. It's very rare that we talk about the righteousness of God. Probably we may even talk about repentance. Probably we will not even emphasize so much about living a life uh, that is acceptable. Uh, the way our gospel in some way has grown what some people will describe as too feminine. Feminine in the sense that, ah, oh, talk to me in Jesus, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Has anyone ever shared the gospel with you? said, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you are going to suffer? Do we dare tell people that? Of course, you will say, you have to be wise, you know. The moment you tell people believe in Jesus, you will suffer. No one is going to suffer. No one cry. I think that is how the Muslims fix the Yes, indeed. The good news, the grace of God. It's all about God and it's God giving us this salvation. And there's nothing in a way that we could not do that. And yet on the other hand, we must not forget that even as we preach, we must preach just like what Paul said here, it is the full counsel. It must be balanced. It must be full and complete. This is what Paul is like. He never will help that we will continue to do so. Even with, by paying it with his life. We will see that Paul's preaching is not just about the grace of God. In this passage, we will see that he also wants about the area we're in, there will be dangers regarding the preaching of the truth. Paul said, you know, that there will be walls that will be coming in and there will be walls that from outside but uh, I'm confident that in our church that does not happen yet. But probably there will be many out there it is happening and the people probably will not even uh, 
Lord is such. Visiting Dallas this time, the way I, I feel that, oh, uh, the number of Chinese churches in Kuwait have grown. When I was there, probably we have five Chinese churches. But now I think it's got over 50 or maybe more. On the outside, it seems that, oh, that's church growth. I already been, when I sort of uh, you know, probe or ask uh, further, quite a few new churches came out as splits from old churches. And quite a number of these cases is because the pastor's problem. The pastor cared so much about what he wants to get rather than what he can give. It splits the church. Or he could be one of the leaders and people begin to take sides and then uh, the church. It is not a good news, but it is something that we must continue to guard against, just like Paul here has warned us. We thank God that the praise gospel church, the Lord continues to give us unity. And that is one legacy, if I can speak of a legacy that I would like to leave you, is that we continue to submit to one another for the name of the Lord. You as Paul said, you know, you know my life. Paul said, I serve like a servant. That is the verb. And underneath that, he said, the first thing that he do is with all humility and with tears. That is the life. What Paul preaches with his lips is sealed it with his blood, just like our John asked. And sisters, I think mean, there is no greater legacy that we can live the Grace Gospel Church. It's not the building. It's not the finances. It's our life and the gospel that we preach. It is that unity that continues to spur us to complete not only our own course, but the course that the Lord would like Grace Gospel Church to do. Just like Paul, we will be faithful to complete the course living a life that is to establish by preaching the full counsel of God. We will continue to preach what we do and we will continue to live and experience what we preach. We did not just an object group or just a full account, but I would like us to take a look back at the end of this process. Paul's posture he knelt and he prayed for the Ephesian church and the others. Nothing is more important than at the end of the day we realize that it is all of God's work. And even though how much that we might have poured or how much we have tried and we have given our work yes, but at the end we cut that through prayer. You know, this passage, I'm glad that it's not for us, it's not meant to be theory, a lot of uh, years, and because Paul mentioned here that uh, you're going to see me again. I hope that doesn't happen to me. Although yeah, that can happen to me at this moment. But I hope that this passage is not here to be a huge effect, okay? But in a way, we will uh, be able to encourage uh, each one uh, of us. Whether you are a pastor or a church leader, or you would call yourself as simply a disciple of Jesus Christ, a great gospel church, who will have all our ministries and our life people. 
It is not to say that prayer is a magic word. No. But prayer is simply trusting God for what He wills and what He can do in our lives as we submit obediently to the call that He has given us. When I arrived in Dallas, the couple who picked me up, you know, I look at him. I said, wow, he has aged after 25 years. However, I was reminded I, in the same way, have in a way also aged. At least if I'm not that old, I am not that young. But this couple made sure that I at least stay one night uh, with them because on the following day they are also flying back to uh, Taiwan for a vacation. And uh, he said, you know, I have something to discuss with you. And I thought, you know, well, what could that be? Actually, uh, what they want to share is that at this point, Jack, who three years ago was about with a bladder cancer, the Lord has been gracious to him and he has been uh, recuperating well. But now, in a way, he was asked to retire. And there was this opportunity for him, the uh, uh, pastor that they knew, uh, moved to Seattle and he was uh, church planting. And this couple, this pastor, was inviting him Could you come over and uh, help us? in this church planting uh, ministry. And that is the thing that they are praying about. How should Jack and his wife think? Should we just, you know, take our retirement years uh, you know, illusory? Actually, in a way they can uh, just live uh, leisurely? Or will they go to Seattle? and continue to serve the Lord by assisting in that church planting market. I said, you know, take this in prayer, go and take a look and see you know, how God will continue uh, to lead you uh, in this decision. You know, it's not very easy to relocate and uh, however, I'm sure that Jack, who has that very simple and genuine faith in the Lord, and it seems that he's one of those two, this couple, who continues to be faithful in the church that they have been for 35 years. I remember it's maybe 25 years ago when I stood here and I shared with you about my dream that when I retired, I like a Swiss chalet. However, I can honestly say that Swiss chalet was not in my mind anymore. You know, every night when I just, you know, crawl under my blanket and sleep on that bed that has been there for more than 50 years, I'm so satisfied and thankful. You know, in my life, what more can I ask for? I think of people, you know, who do not even have a roof. I think of Jesus who said, the Son of Man does not have a pillow to put his head. And here, I have a very comfortable In a way, it is more than enough for a person like me, and I'm thankful to the Lord that with that 50 year old death, I can keep on and pursue to complete the course. Probably it will be the first time that you saw me that once someone would say, I have reached 65, I want to step down. In a way, this is a critical moment in my life, critical in the sense that it is a good time stop, to look back and evaluate, and to see
see how the Lord will continue to lead my life in the days ahead. Whether it's a day, a year, 10 years, or 35 years. It's not a matter about the length. It's about faithfulness and commitment to complete the course, to pursue the call of God by living a just starting life and to be faithful to continue to preach the whole counsel of God. My sisters, and we all together continue to follow, follow the Lord in the same way. Let us pray. But once again, we all, in one heart, we want to thank you for Grace Gospel Church. Lord, we thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our leaders. Lord, I thank you because I know that there are better and more faithful people after us. That is your faithfulness. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the grace that you have shown to your servant even in his incompleteness, in his weakness, in his failures. And yet, Lord, you are the one who continues to be faithful. Lord, today your servant is not indispensable. Because you are there, you are God. You are the one who is, who was, and will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For my for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that one day you are coming back for me. Father, continue to, to serve the legacy of Grace Hospital Church, wherein we continue to send out and to support missionaries. And at the same time, Lord, we will continue to build and train and to edify and to lead disciples for Jesus Christ. Father, may we be a faithful disciple and also a faithful disciple. In Jesus' name, we ask all of this.